well, today's plan. Uh, hi, well, let's find it. Well, you know, all right, we've only got 15 people or something in class. I think people are late. Um, even though they just have to tumble out of bed and uh, switch on their laptop, right? Um, but, you know, let's give them a couple of minutes. And in the meanwhile, um, just let's just carry on a regular conversation amongst you guys. If you want to talk, that's fine. You can coordinate amongst yourself uh, who wants to uh, demo their code and so on. You know, and, and I think going forward, we'll also try and make sure that um, we are able to um, do group demonstrations. You know, I mean, sometimes I think I, I thought about why um, why some of the other students are not volunteering to come forward to demo their code. And I think it's probably because, you know, they're also, it's not because they don't know C++ maybe, it's probably because they just feel very awkward uh, doing it by themselves. And uh, so I think we'll open up the floor. If there are pairs of people or triplets who want to demo their code, that's fine, okay? So you can just do it together and um, and uh, be moral support as it were for each other and hopefully that will uh, make it easier for us to get a better um, representation in class okay so um yeah let's give them let's give them about two or three minutes yeah people are joining um uh, and in two minutes we can start if you have any questions in the meanwhile, just, you know, you should feel free to ask. Um, we have a whole bunch of um, demos today, I hope, of uh, people who um, would like to show their code. I think Daniel should go first because um, I, I think that last class he was already ready to go. Well, let me see if Daniel is here. Hey, Daniel, are you here? Oh, Daniel's not here. Um, yeah, well, he was the one who sent me an email asking if he can demo his code, and he's not here yet. So let's see. Who else? Giorgio also sent me an email. But let's wait, okay? I'd, I'd like the others to be here to see your code. All right, so let's say 15 minutes, uh, no, no, not 15 minutes, uh, uh, two or three minutes from now, and then we can start. Uh, in the meanwhile, if you have any questions, you should feel free to ask me, and I'm more than happy to um, answer your questions, okay? And, uh, or even you, you can ask each other questions too, and they could uh, go ahead and, um, you know, help, help each other out, yeah? I'm just sitting here, uh, so I'm not. We're not going to start class until, you know, three more minutes from now. So feel free. How's everyone doing this morning? Oh, great. Thank you. I'm doing pretty well. Thank you. What are people working on in this class? Like, what quest are you on? What modules are you reading? I'm working on Quest 4 right now. Same. Um, I actually was going to ask, like, just like a general question. Um, I was wondering if it, for Quest 4, um, if you guys had to use the factorial function. Um, no, you shouldn't use the factorial function. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious. Well, I don't. I don't believe there is a factorial function. Is there a factorial function in in the library? I don't. There think. is. I think I saw one. I, I I'd be very surprised. Uh, you know, are you talking about the Boost library or some other library? 
Um, I don't think there is a factorial function in either the math library or the standard library. Let me find it. Um... Yeah, I think the uh, I think I thought the purpose of the quest was to um, programmatically create factorial like through loops. A recursive one because I couldn't find any factorial function. Yeah, yeah thought, recursively. Yeah, I thought I actually. Yeah, I'm not. I actually can't find. I mean, I'm not finding the function actually. So, by the way, um, um, it's just a tip. Just, just a tip. Um, if you want, so I, I think the place where you have to, where, where, where do you need to calculate factorials? Where, where, etox. Oh, etox, etox, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, see, for etox, here's a tip. Uh, you can actually get away without having to calculate the factorial or um, using pow to raise x to some power, okay? So I think you, you can get away without doing either of those, meaning that you don't have to use the math library for anything. I think for anything? Possibly. Well, certainly for or not for POW and factorial. Uh, I'm not going to say anymore. You can, you know, feel and, and suck the joy out of it. So you can just feel free to experiment and, and find out. And that, by the way, is not, not using factorial and not using POW is, in fact, the better way, the more efficient way to do it. Um, but you can find out. You can find out and play around with it. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, I can't find the... I thought I saw a factorial function. Uh, I, I think it might have been with, you know, um, maybe you saw it on Stack Overflow or something uh, where someone had already implemented it up, you know, like 25 lines up and you're looking at a fragment of code where they're calling the function. And, and then you mistakenly thought, oh, it must be part of the library. Yeah, perhaps. Well, okay, I think we should, we should start now. Uh, oh, we have uh, uh, a number of students and Daniel is here too. Um, and Daniel, you were supposed to go today, uh, uh, go first today uh, because you sent me email, you are ready to go last class too, yes? Yeah, yeah I sent you the email. Yeah, but it's like 30 um, Yeah, okay, so uh, let's say Daniel goes first and then we'll, we'll just play it by ear. You know, and then we'll say, yeah, actually, just type in your name in the chat window. Just type in your name in the chat window. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, your name is tagged by the system, right? So you say, uh, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. Um, and just type it in, in the chat window. So it'll also give us a sequence of you guys who are going to go. Daniel is first, and then Giorgio was next. And then we'll see who wants to go after that. Yeah? Uh, let me type in uh, Daniel and Giorgio here. So, okay, all right. Go ahead, type in more names. Um, I hope more of you are ready to go. Um, I think Andy, who has to go sooner um, at nine o'clock, you know, if, if he wants to go um, earlier, he would have um, priority, as it were. The rest of you um, can just buy in, in sequence. Go on, feel, feel free, feel, don't be afraid, okay? Don't, don't be afraid. Um, I, 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 I honestly, I think that at this point in time in our class, uh, the only thing really holding you guys back from, you know, uh, yeah, Ken, thank you, showing your code is fear. Uh, fear, uh, I don't know, it's, it's just fear uh, of what peers or other people will think about you and, um, and you have to let go of that because you know fear is the thing that usually holds you back. You know, I don't know uh, how or uh, when. I think at some point early on in our lives, uh, we just get so accustomed to uh, social acceptance. You know, getting crazed by family and friends and people who think that who we think um, are in high esteem, and then we get addicted to it. Uh, addicted to people around us telling us how good you are, how virtuous you are, how righteous you are, and things like that. And we kind of salivate, you know, salivate for these things. And then, and then after that, unfortunately, the side effect of this 
is that we start evaluating everything that we want to do uh, with that lens, saying, if I do this, am I going to lose a little bit of this praise that this really no good person was giving me before, right? Well, I shouldn't say no good, but really it didn't no good in the sense that it didn't, didn't really af affect you. You know, I mean, what, whatever they told you, uh, saying, oh, well, you're such a great guy for uh, displaying this virtuous quality and things like that. And we say, oh, I'm, I feel so good. And, um, and then we say, oh, am I going to lose that opinion that that person has of me? So I'm not going to do this. And that becomes a, a, a fear nugget in your head. And lots of these fear nuggets prevent you from uh, achieving your dream, right? So your dream says, I, I have the skill. I have this uh, amazing uh, skill, which I can display and uh, induce pleasure in all these people. I, I can make the lives of so many people better and so on, but I'm not going to do that because if I do that, um, these other people who themselves may not have done what I was going to do or what I'm going to do, but they would, you know, think badly of me. And so I'm not going to do this. And that's fear, right? Let go. Who cares? I don't, nobody gives a shit, right? I mean, these videos, they, they, nobody's going to watch these videos in, you know, two years time. Or even, I don't know if people are going to watch it even tomorrow, really, right? I mean, we take, we take the pains to record our classes and put them online and say, hey, online students, you missed this concept. Go and walk, you know, watch these videos and, and learn these concepts. And many times we find that, you know, an online student or some other student uh, in 2B or 2C, right? They, the, the answers are there in video recordings that we have provided uh, in discussions that some of you have taken the pains to have online, right? This is one of you who says, this, I have this bug, which is you know, perplexing me. I'm totally stumped. Can someone help me? They were brave enough to go and say, I have this bug, come and help me. And, and someone else helped them. And all of that is in, in the record. You just have to go into Reddit and search and, and find these. But uh, many times I find students who don't do this, who don't watch the videos, who don't um, go to Reddit and look for these solutions, but they are expecting to be spoon fed the solution, right? So they say, I have this bug, can tell me what, someone tell me what the answer is. Can you take a look at my code and tell me what the hell is going on, right? And, um, and that really is, uh, is, uh, is, is a sad uh, state of events because um, they don't want to know how to do it. They just want to know the answer. And uh, that is a kind of student who will not do very well in my class, okay? Um, you may be, you know, doing everything perfectly by the book, uh, acing all the exams, um, but you're not going to get a good grade in my class if you don't understand the concepts, you know? But by understanding concepts, uh, you have to display, demonstrate your knowledge by explaining it to other people, helping other people, right? So only people who really go out of their way to help people understand concepts really, really have a solid grasp of the concept, I find, right? So when it comes to, you know, students, I've found that, you know, they, uh, they want other people also to learn these things and, and take advantage of these things. Don't, yeah, so these videos, and they're up there and nobody watches them really. You know, even today's class, uh, we only have like 20 students yet, you know, and people are still getting out of bed. And many of these students join later. Uh, and I don't know if they go back and watch these videos that we've recorded and put on YouTube um, to see the, you know, to see what we covered. Um, but, uh, but the point is that you should not feel shy. You should not feel shy about, uh, you know, putting yourself out there. What, what's going to happen? What is, is, you know, put yourself out there. Uh, and it's just a video. You're asking a question. Uh, what danger does it pose to your life? You know, is someone going to track you down and kill you just because you asked a question on YouTube and, and, and it's public? Um, right? Nobody's going to kill people that are, you know, productive and help other people. Um, I hope. Anyway, right? Uh, so don't, don't be afraid. You know, fear holds you back. Uh, fear holds you back. Oh, of course, I mean, this is, they, other things can hold you back too, um, in a good way. Like uh, I think, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi holding back Anakin. You know, don't go, don't go down that path. You're going to get killed, <laughs> right? So, and Anakin says, no, Obi-Wan is holding me back. No, that, not that kind of holding me back, right? So but it's your own when you hold yourself back. Uh, you have to ask yourself the question, why the hell am I not doing this? You know? What's wrong with doing this? What, what, you know, if other people think I'm stupid, yeah, too bad. <laughs> uh, well, at least I've uh, now gotten past my stupidity because, you know, I asked the question and someone uh, uh, disabused me of these wrong notions. And so I could correct myself. And now I know what the truth is. And uh, so if you're willing and brave and courageous enough to put yourself out there, 
you'll see what the truth is. You know, about these, uh, uh, these nuanced uh, control structures, right? So this is the right way to do these things and the wrong way. And, and the danger is that it's um, like idioms in computer science, right? It's, the danger is that you could pick up the wrong way to do it uh, and then it works. You know, that's the uh, unfortunate thing about many things in computer science, I find that uh, like in Perl, you know, in the last class, uh, many ways to do the same thing. And uh, when, whenever you have many ways to do the same thing, um, you uh, invariably, unless they're all identical, have better ways of doing this, right? So there'll be some inferior ways, mediocre ways, better way and the best way to do something, right? Maybe the best way is never, we don't know yet, right? But we all, it's just like science, right? We don't know the best possible thing, but we're always marching towards it, you know, getting better and better and better and better. So everything you do, you start off with a rough prototype, right? But it should be, uh, it should be pointing in the right direction, right? And then um, if you are, if you accept the fact, right, we have to accept the fact that what I did was, is pointing in the right direction, but it's not quite there. Then uh, you would say, well, I'm going to keep improving it. And then you keep marching towards the holy grail, which is the, the perfect solution or the best solution, you know, or, you know, the best we have at any time, which is as close as possible to the best ever. And, um, but on the other hand, if you do a mediocre job, and you think, well, I've done my job, it works, right? It calculates uh, this incredible number and prints it, I'm done. Uh, and maybe it's an inferior or mediocre way to do it. But if you think you're done, um, you will never get to the best possible way, right? So the, the way to make progress, I think, is you know, um, anything you have, um, don't feel embarrassed, right? Just put it out there. And uh, what's the worst that could happen? Someone could say, hey, that's, uh, you know, total shit. Or they could say, uh, well, you know, I can improve it for you here. You know, change, change, uh, change that syntax, right? Uh, and uh, use a ternary operator there and, and it'll work much better or so, something like that, right? So you're open for correction, you fix it. Uh, and um, that's the worst thing that can happen, to you, really. Right? I mean, it's um, nothing, nothing bad. So you should go ahead. Take, take these opportunities. Take, yeah, thank you. Uh, I, Giorgio said, I totally agree. I, <laughs> I hope that he's agreeing with what I said and not with uh, something else in the chat window earlier, right? So, um, all right. So I, I don't think I wanna take up any more of your time. We're already 20 minutes uh, into class, you know, although we waited for a little bit for the other students. Um, but I think we should start. Uh, so uh, the first person to take the screen I think, uh, Daniel, you should just be able to grab the screen, right? I'm not sh I'm sharing the screen. It's just my camera at this point. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Daniel's got the screen. Uh, so yeah, go ahead, uh, Daniel. So uh, it's a small program. Uh, and uh, yeah, and, and walk us through some of the salient stuff. You don't have to go into the details of, you know, standard data structures, we've, uh, you know, control structures we've already covered. Uh, so you can just say, like for that for loop, you can say, I'm iterating through the characters, right? And that's enough, we, you, know, and, uh, you know, it's a new syntax that we don't know for, for loops, but you know, that syntax, this code is going to be uh, online and people can basically say, hey, that's a new way of writing a for loop. Let me just Google it and find out and they'll find out, right? And you know, it'll, they'll find out in two minutes. So we don't have to go into the details of that. But if you have something interesting uh, that is uh, not directly related to your code, but it's a sideways issue that is kind of related to CS2A or CS concepts, uh, by all means, you should go ahead and do that. Because that's the kind of thing you don't get. You don't get the, the insights that you, uh, you got when you were creating this program. We don't get the, those insights in, in a video or um, in, in a code that's published, right? So those things you should feel free to dive in and we'll all be, you know, all ears listening to you. Okay, so all right, so let's uh, start. Uh, Daniel, uh, we have three people only. But uh, in the chat window, please go ahead, enter your names, okay? Enter your names um, and please tell your friends that um, if they are uh, absenting themselves from class uh, because they are afraid that I'm going to call on them, right? As I, I volunteer someone and say, hey, you know, I think last class I, uh, someone didn't volunteer and I pulled them out. Who was it? Uh, was it Giorgio or uh, someone? Alex, uh, uh, Alexis, Alexis, right? So I, mean, I, I don't think she's ever volunteered. And I said, hey, Alexis, and I asked her a question and put her on the spot. Um, so uh, I can promise not to do that if you prefer, if you guys prefer. Um, but please do chime in in the chat session, right? It's the more the merrier, right? And I think um, we should find out, right? So we should all find out and work together. Already, I'm like super duper glad that, you know, Andy and Andrew and all these other people um, setting up these group sessions and you're all having so much fun. Um, 
I, I love that. But take that to the next level, right? You know, work together. Imagine, right? And so there's many great products out there that were created by five-person teams, right? I'm pretty sure that, you know, Facebook, when it launched, was launched by no more than two or three people, right? So the very first, uh, the very first Facebook product that came out out of Harvard, I'm pretty sure that, you know, Mark and maybe a couple of other hackers got together and put it together, right? So you don't need to have a huge team to do something that's really cool. Uh, in the early versions, right? You will see that you know when when you de develop a product, the core product does not require a great deal of ingenuity. We have ingenuity, but great deal of work, right? So you can easily put it together in your basement or garage. And most of the time, the bulk of the product, the bulk of the development, the bulk of the uh, you know um, expansion of the product, uh, ninety nine point nine nine percent of what we see today as a product. Uh, has come after the basic product is already in place. You know, you bring in uh, uh, marketing people to, you know, uh, get exposure. You get more developers to uh, tweak the uh, UI in certain ways that you know that needs to be done, but it'll take you longer to do it if you were to do it because your expertise is not in the UI, right? So you bring these people in, you bring someone else in from, you know, who can, who's versatile with, you know, cloud technologies to take your product and scale it out, you know, infinitely. So you bring these teams and, and, and but the core product is uh, two people or three people. Right, uh, the CTO and CEO, if they call themselves these funny titles, but um, that's all it is. So that's what you're doing here. You don't have to think that you know I'm going to develop this great product, but I need this big team around me. No, no, you can do it on your own, and all you know, and uh, and then um, uh, um, yeah, uh, and then you'll get more people to come around and play uh, with it. So hey, as an example of this, uh, uh, my cloud class, which I uh, taught. Uh, last fall, uh, AWS Cloud class, one of the students uh, did a really cool demo in my cloud class. Uh, and, uh, and I was very pleased with that. And he took that and developed into a whole a full project. And he also mastered, you know, cloud and everything. Well, mastered these. So he was able to uh, scale it out. And it's now a full product. The only thing it probably lacks at this point is the SSL certificate, which, you know, it takes a, a few hours to install. But everything is in place. And uh, you can actually check it out. I think it's called say, say my script.com. Okay, is it com or org? I don't know. Uh, check it out. Well, anyway, but it's, that's a full, full fledged product. It's hugely powerful. It uses machine learning in the back end, it uses AI, you know, uh, NoSQL databases and all those things. But it started off as a class demo. And you can go onto our channel. Actually, you can you should go onto our channel and look at your past videos of my cloud class, and you'll actually see Panini uh, demonstrating uh, his uh, his hack job in class in front of the rest of the uh, uh, students. And and uh, not only Panini, right? So all the, all my other cloud students, they all got a chance to demo their code, and and you'll see how many cool things came out of that class. And some of them are really out there now. You know, out there, people can actually start using it. Um, without fear of, you know, it's, it's all scaled and everything. It's beautiful. It's like a full, full flesh product out there. So that's maybe one of something you do today. You hang on to it and keep adding bells and whistles over the next four or five months. And eventually it'll become, you know, blossom into this thing that everybody wants to use. And if nobody uses it, that's fine. You'll still use it, right? So that's what you want to do. All right. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, go, go ahead and take, take, uh, take the screen and uh, start, start your demo. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, first off, this is an implementation of counting sort, which is the fastest known sorting algorithm. Um, it's it is big O n, meaning that it's linear. Like its speed is linear, so it basically like it's basically as fast as it can get, as we know how to sort things. So it uses an array of counters. It just goes through each through the entire list, putting Incrementing the counter or for each each character, and then it just rebuilds the list by I just think hey so there here's one a in this list okay then and I'll just put one a into the output there are two b's put two b's in the output and so on and so forth and then your list is sorted so like for instance it would let's just go on on this string that I'm using and so it's so it's easy. An A puts adds one to the A counter. Season eight puts one in the A counter, or sees J puts one in the J counter, and it just goes all the way through the list, and then it puts them back in the order specified in this string. 
and then we just have and to notice I'm actually initializing a variable using you know, curly bracket syntax because that's supposedly better or to use because it also can default initialize. So it's like, oh, I'm actually using that here. So this is just creating a 36 element long array full of zeros. So I don't have to type, you know, that many zeros. And then I'm using a for loop to go through the through the input string, and, and then and just I normalize the character and find its position in the priority, so it can put put the number in the correct bucket. Then we just are creating our output, and and then we just go through this for loop, which actually I have to use index indices here because I have to index into priority again. So this just rebuilds the string. And then I just output it. So for instance, if I run it and wait for a moment for this to pop up. Of course, now the C compiler would take forever and a day. Why why does it take so long to compile your code? What what machine are you on? Like in a you know, PC XT or I'm something? On, like I'm on a I'm actually a fairly high end machine. I don't know when oh it does. I usually am on Linux. I don't actually know. On a high-end machine, I, I, this, it shouldn't take this long to compile. Oh, hey, what, what are those funny characters? You have these uh, control ampersands. Um, I, I don't know. I think it's an artifact of me using a compile script. But, you know, it's being kind of funny. Maybe it just... Right. So kill it and maybe compile it by hand or something. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. What is this? VS Code or what, what is this? This is actually GVim. Or it's been, oh, now okay. it goes. So you're in an editor, yeah, not an just, IDD. Yeah, Clang must have just done something funny. It's now working. So you can see the sort of version of this string, which in C++ strings are arrays of characters, is this. And you can see it's all the characters in order of, in the order specified right in this string. So if someone want and could provide me a string to sort, or to, just, just take a name. Take someone's name. Uh, take uh, Giorgio Figali. Okay. Is I think um, is, is uh, Giorgio Figali is is that the longest name we have in class today? Oh, actually, you can do mine. My my full name. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I put in a space there too. The space is what thirty two, um, right? I, space is thirty two. It should come up I, at the very I beginning. Haven't, you like I haven't fleshed it out enough yet to remove spaces yet. No, I think you are fine. You'll find you just put in a space between the on and then the Venkata Raman. Venkata Raman. Um, I think you'll be fine because oh, you know space will be ASCII thirty-two and it'll just get put into the you know thirty-second uh, counter. Uh, the I think so. I have from from your code. That's what it seems should happen. I'm not indexing by ASCII value though. I'm indexing by this priority string. Oh, okay. So uh, you know what? The, I see. I see. I see. I, I got it. Uh, yeah, put the space there. Uh, oh, uh, if you put a space there, priority. Oh, but then um, I see. Yeah, okay. So you can actually improve this algorithm, uh, make it more efficient. This is not the most efficient uh, because the find call. Yeah, the find call is linear. Yes? The find call in that string is linear, isn't it? I just tried, I don't know, but I tried to fit it, the thing into like 30 lines. Like if I was to implement it full, I probably would implement like a faster finding. Maybe we will walk through it. We'll, 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 uh, we'll uh, as, as uh, yeah, today, this is a very nice program. Uh, Daniel, I, I actually like this very much. Um, and in fact, uh, I would strongly uh, urge you to take a crack at that problem that I posted in the Reddit. Um, it's something to do with mode, right? So some huge array has a unique mode and you have to find it in linear time. Yeah. So I would encourage you in your own time, not in class. Okay. Uh, I think because you've written this program, I think you are ready to tackle that program and you should take a crack at it. Right. So, I mean, I, nobody's going to give you the solution. Uh, maybe I'll do a quest. Maybe I'll do a quest that, um, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll think about that. Okay, so uh, yeah, you should you should try that. This is a nice program. After you've after you've done talking through this program, we can jointly look at how we can make it faster. Yeah. Okay. Um, by the way, I added space support real quick because it's not that hard to add a character to priority. Yeah, yeah. 
So you can see that this is the sword version of your name. Like, hey, of course, cool. like, I could I'm worried about that many A's. Try, try so George, George that, you know, Figali too. You know, like we did in Base 27, uh, maybe these are our special names. These are our sorted names. Okay, so I just need to scroll down the name list to see how to spell it. G-E-O-R-G-I-O -O, space. Figali is F-E-G-H. And do you have an H, Giorgio? Yes, it's H-A-L-I. Yeah, Figali. Oh, and it seemed to delete my equal sign. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, okay, there we go. Cool. That should work. So now just pilot. Wait for camera to come up. Um, where where do you see all these errors? I don't even see the errors when you when you compile these things. Where where is your terminal? I don't see anything. I just see your screen with the editor. Oh, um. Okay, do you, I, I see do now. You I see, see the um. I see it now. Window. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, just it pops up. Like okay. I'm just using a convenience command that I wrote in my Vim configuration file to do them. Like I wrote put them into the Vim configuration. I hear. Yeah. Thing that just right. well, Giorgio Fergali. Yes, sir. Be like, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. That's really nice. Um, all right. So do you want to do you want to uh, explore any more nuances, uh, Daniel, uh, of this code before we um, start looking at a way in which you can make that faster? Um, I, I mean, like, I want to quickly go over how. Yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Or why this looks. So the reason in that I'm, I can use in that this is an array is because in C and C plus plus strings are considered arrays which is also how I'm indexing through them because as, as by, according to the C language, this, this string is an array of characters. And in fact, that's the only way you can do two, two strings in C, C is by having them as character arrays and it just implicitly converts this into a C, to a, an array of characters, which is why air const char pointer comes from. Also, I mean, I have to include locale because in order to normalize the characters, so that way I don't have an even longer priority system. Um, for some reason, the Sphere Library's two lowercase function requires you to include std colon colon locale. So I just have to include that. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Great. Does anybody have any questions? You know, I mean, I, chances are, if you don't understand the code, you should ask the question. Daniel will be more than happy to explain uh, parts of his code that are still um, um, elusive to some people. Um, do you understand? So feel free to ask any questions. Okay, uh, so can someone other than Daniel um, explain, take, take, you know, take a stab at explaining how this program works, right? Or what, what is, the, what is the, the key insight, right? The key insight in this program that uh, gives a, a linear time, well, it's actually, strictly speaking, not linear. We'll get to it eventually. We'll make it linear. But, um, well, it is linear in the length of the string, but it's not... You can make it faster, right? But what, th there is a key insight in, in the program um, that uh, Daniel uh, was able to exploit that uh, makes, it, makes it what it is. So can someone take a stab at it, right? You know, I mean, see, see how it does its job. Why, why, does it, why does it sort? I'll give it a try if no one else wants to. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Is that Andrew? Yep. So... Um... Because, uh, because Daniel knew that strings are stored as character arrays, um, he can then also use his priority string uh, that he has set up in a specific order. And from that priority string, he can get an index of each character, uh, kind of like its, um, its location, so to speak, along that string. Uh, then whatever string, which is a character array that he wants to sort, uh, he, he searches through that string and 
whenever he encounters a character, he can assign it to that index according to his priority string. Um, thus, uh, it's a really straightforward printout um, and uh, it, all, it, it uh, saves time because uh, he doesn't have to go through his string multiple times. He can go through his string in one go and it can assign an index to each character and then reprint it according to that index. Great. All right. Um, who, who else would like to take a stab at, uh, well, you know, so uh, Daniel explained the program. Uh, Andrew, uh, Andrew explained the program from a different perspective, which means you have now two explanations um, to help you understand. Uh, so someone else maybe take a stab at explaining what Daniel did and Andrew explained. Right. So just by explaining it, you'll find that it, it is it, it settles more strongly in your own mind. OK, so it's one more person and then we can try and try, try and take a look at how we can make this program faster. Uh, I have a question on line 14. I didn't understand the. Who is this, Giorgio? Yes. The line 14, I didn't. Uh, perfectly understand the concept behind the behind this line. All right. Hey, um, uh, uh, Daniel. Daniel, are you there? Daniel? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right. So can we please, um, I'm, I'm going to suggest something to just simplify this, you know, I and mean, what you've got there is perfectly right. Just going to simplify that so that it's easier for, uh, you know, uh, some other students to understand for the two lower get rid of that you know locale and all these other things uh, and yeah yeah just calls 10 to lower that's fine and don't give it the second argument you know i think the extra parentheses and all these ought to add to cognitive load just get rid of that after the comma get rid of everything after that comma i'm not entirely sure if it works without it though uh, hang on, and um, yeah, can you okay. move your mouse so that that uh, you know magenta rectangle disappears? Okay, all right. So uh, two lower. Okay, get rid of this. Uh, get get rid of the standard two lower also. It's a standard qualification on that. And then uh, what we'll do is use a macro. No, no, we want we want two lower, but not just not standard two lower. You know, just say two lower. See. Yeah, um, and do, do we have the right number of uh, closing parentheses there? One, two, yeah, yeah, okay. Now uh, go to the top uh, where you have the include files and include hash C type, hash include C type. Okay, now C type is a header file that describe, that that defines some macros. Macros meaning, you know, some, no, 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 no C, just C type, not C type, but um, C type, just C type, yeah. Um, I'm complaining about it missing the he dot h. Yeah, okay. Just C type would do. Um, and uh, uh, what, what what was I saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In in that file, uh, in in that header file, you'll find a macro called to lower, uh, which does exactly the same thing. Uh, so just compile it and run it now. Make sure it's running, and then um, Giorgio can ask us question number fourteen. If that is still yeah, yeah it requires dot h. What? what? Oh, C type dot it requires C sure. dot h. I don't think so. Yeah, um, like I compiled it into the error. It did. So does this compile? This version compiles. Yeah. That is, if playing does not decide decides oh. to cooperate. All right. You see that um, that, that's that's I fine as long as it compiles. Now, uh, Giorgio. Now that that line has been simplified, right? Because they had other stuff that was not directly relevant to your question, which I, I think it was not directly re related to your question, right? So go ahead and see if you can, um, if you can. Yeah, your comment is all right, so you don't have to change the comment. So basically what we did was um, we removed the standard uh, to lower the standard uh, one because we, we included the library C type. And then what what the standard did was it, it put it put it, it put it the each letter to the uh, to the standard that he chose as priority so the so it incremented the correct uh, uh, yeah 
and then it each character it normalizes so that um, so that it goes from the uh, it goes from the wanted the string priority so like space zero one two three four each character goes uh, from the from the order of the counters. Um, yes, um, yeah, perfectly fine. Uh, Daniel will answer, we will confirm that for you if you uh, in a minute. But you know, this STD, the standard and um, to lower, don't confuse the two, right? It's, it's to lower is not part of the standard namespace. Um, the one that we're using is just a macro, a C macro. Um, and we, we, we don't we want don't want to go into the details. Just assume that to lower is a function for all practical purposes that takes a letter and returns the you know downcased version of the same letter and um, I, I show you how to do that in one line later on um, but that's essentially what it does it, 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 Daniel do you want uh, I can I can explain this or do you want to explain this more the, the line number 14 that uh, Giorgio has uh, got a question on all right uh, so what he's doing there is for each character in your name is going through your name one after another each character, um, he, he has got an array. He's got a vector of counts, right? And the counts are all zero to start with because he's not seen any letter. And now he's gonna step through your letter, one as a name, one letter at a time. And for each letter he sees, he's going to say, oh, uh, G is the eighth letter here. So I'm gonna increment the eighth bin. You know, H is the ninth letter. So he just increments all these bins. And then at the end, when he's done, going through your entire name, he's going and now going to look at the vector of the bins that he's got in sequence one after another. And he's simply going to say, oh, how many A's do I have? Because the bins are basically, you know, in the order, right? And, and it, uh, how many A's do I have? I'll print that many A's, that many B's, that many C's. If it's zero, I don't want to print a, 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 at all. And, 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 and he does the whole, uh, the, your, you know, all of, all of the letters represent the count and it works. Now, um, does, does that answer your question, Giorgio? Yes, I understand that, but what does the uh, to lower uh, function do in this case? Right. So what to lower does is suppose you had a, a, you know a name with a George. Yeah, Giorgio. It has both uppercase and lowercase g. Um, I think what Daniel wants to say is, well, you know, you could still do it, and then it'll still sort it. And, you know, uppercase g will is it will come up before lowercase g because you know in in his well in his priority string he doesn't have both cases. And so oh, so because he, oh, so because he he put only uh, lowercase lowercase letters in his, in his string yeah. priority. That's why but we'll fix it. We'll fix it now. We're going to fix it now in a nice way so that um, this really cool. Uh, algorithm that Daniel has implemented, uh, we'll just take it to you know one small step further, one small to make it you know polish it a bit more, right? So um, is it, that's what he's doing. The risk here, of course, is that if someone supplied a name uh, which does not ex which with a character that does not exist in the string, uh, it'll probably core dump or crash or do something really bad. Yes, like for example, you know, I said you know stick in a space and there was no space in priority, and then the find find is going to return when you say hey find me a space in the string and find says no I can't find this uh, any spaces in the string. What does it return? It can't return a valid number to you, right? Uh, because if it returns five, it means that oh I found five, you know space in the fifth. So it can't return any number. Uh, so strictly speaking, uh, what can it return? It has to return a sentinel, right? It has to return a sentinel, which is not a number. But everything that it returns is a number because find returns a number, an index. So what the designers did was let's make find um, return an unsigned integer, meaning that you are guaranteed that find only returns a value that is non-negative, zero up to you know infinity. Well, not strictly speaking, not infinity, but you know four bytes, biggest biggest number, right? So that means that gives you the ability to design find so that if a character was not found, it can return a negative number, yes? However, it's returning a non-negative, it, 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 the signature of the function says, I'm always returning an unsigned, right? So if you return a negative one in unsigned, what is negative one in unsigned? Can someone tell me what negative one in unsigned is? What happens if you cast negative one? It's all, it goes all the way back to data representation, yes? Right, negative one. In, 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 uh, if you take negative one and put it in two's complement, you're gonna get all ones, yes? No, is it, is it all ones? No, I think it's one followed by all zeros. You know, this is the one followed by all, right? And if, 
or something like that. I mean, it rolls over and it becomes, a, it becomes the biggest possible number all once. Yeah, it becomes the biggest possible number all once. When, when you decrement it, when zero minus one becomes all ones and it's the biggest possible number. So um, that number is defined uh, in the library to, be, uh, to have a special name. And I think that name is uh, no pass. Is it no pass? I, if I type it in, I'll probably uh, remember what it is. I think it's called a string. I think that's what it is, right? You can confirm it. You can Google it and find out. But it's a, that is a special variable. It's a system variable, which stands for the biggest possible number that you can use to index into an array that I think is you know as big as four bytes can hold or something like that. But, but we don't have to care about that. So we can always assume that if find returns this ginormously large number called a string colon, a string double colon and pause, it means that find was not able to succeed in finding what you asked it to find. Does, does that make sense? Now, given that is the behavior of find, uh, it would be very dangerous to use the value that find returns directly to index into an array. Yes, because if find returns a billion and your array is only like 10, elements long, you're going to index into the billionth element of the array, which doesn't belong to you. And then the operating system will say, hey, you know, this guy is going out of his area and touching stuff that he shouldn't do. I'm going to nix the program. You'll, you'll get a signal and get killed right there. Your program will crash, right? So, um, so we're going to make a couple of fixes and also not just cosmetic tweaks. No, in fact, no cosmetic tweaks because this program looks beautiful as it is really, right? So we're just going to make some efficiency tweaks to this program, efficiency and correctness tweaks, right? To, to, to prevent that error from happening. Um, that dangerous error from happening. But at the same time, we're also going to make this program marginally faster, okay? So how do we do that? So the first, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is take advantage of the fact that every letter in these names is basically an ASCII letter, isn't it? They're all just ASCII letters. So what we'll do is define counts, not 39, just say counts is an array of uh, 255 ints, right? It's, it's a very minimal overhead, you know, believe me. So uh, 255 bytes is nothing at all compared to the amount of, uh, you know, uh, compute cycles you're saving. So it's just a, an array of integers in 256, actually, two, sorry, 256. Just in case you get a zero character, right? 256. Okay, um, and I think the default initial, initial, initialization is zero, so you don't have to explicitly initialize it, but you know, leave it, leave it there if you want. Okay, now all we need to do is uh, when we increment the count, you say count off the character, the ASCII value of the character. Change, change the inside counts, inside counts, yeah, on line 14. Yeah, so uh, take everything out of the square brackets, everything out of the square brackets, and just say C. Okay, there you go. All right, now uh, when you print it out, uh, when you print it out uh, on line 23, you only print it out if the count is greater than zero, right? If, if a priority, no, if, if count, right? Uh, what, what are you doing there, um, X? Can, do you mind if I just restructure that for loop here, just, just so it's more readable for the rest of the students? Daniel, is that okay with you? Yes. Okay, all right. So. Um, in in uh, get rid of the inside of the for loop. So get rid of this part. Yeah, and uh, get rid of that. And uh, no, the, the 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 inner loop also should go. Oh, actually, no, no, no. Hang on, leave leave that there. Actually, the, that that inner loop is correct. Sorry, just put leave it there for now. I was look, uh, thinking about the top one. All right, change the uh, outer for loop to a regular regular uh, iterating for loop for size t i equals zero, i less than two five five and so on. Oh, sorry. Actually no, 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 don't do that. Just do this, uh, you know, idiomatic uh, standard syntax. I'm less than or equal to... No, I greater than or equal to zero, yeah? Oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah sorry. sorry. Uh, no, I is less than or equal to two, 256, sorry, 256. I plus plus, okay, all right. Now here, you're, all you're going to do is if uh, if counts of I, if counts of I is, no, uh, above, the for, above the for loop, yeah. 
Uh, in fact, you don't even need to do that. Yeah, you know, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. you say for, uh, for um, yeah, let's change the inner for loop also. And just say for uh, size t j equals zero. Yeah, j is less than the count you want, which is counts of i. No, no, counts, counts, C O U N T S. Counts of i. Square bracket, sorry. Square bracket, i, close square bracket. All right, I think you've got two. One, yeah, yeah, one more. Uh, now you can print out the character, right? So now you can print out the character. Now, uh, No, uh, no, no, you want to print out the character itself. So what you want to do is type cast J to a character. So you say, uh, open, open, uh, open a parentheses. Char. Yeah, space, yeah. Okay. So um, each character, let, let me run through this in my mind. Um, so for each character, you guys should also be doing that, right? If there's a bug, you should tell me. Um, so if J equals zero, so there's equals zero. If it's got more than it's got more than one, it's going to iterate and add the character value, like you know, sixty-five, and character. Yeah, I think that should work. Uh, and then you can just say, uh, yeah, I, I think that should work. Is 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 everybody okay with that? Um, it seems right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, size t, mm -hmm. Augie. It just means unsigned. Unsigned. Yeah, size t is unsigned. Right, uh, size T stands for size type. Yeah, T stands for type. In C++ and C, uh, you'll see many data types uh, that end in underscore T. Right, um, they are defined somewhere in some file, um, and and uh, it just means underscore T means it's a data type, and size T means it's a it's a data type that is used to encode size, and obviously size cannot be negative, and so size T is unsigned. Uh, that's what it means, right? It's, it's actually unsigned long because you can have big ass um, uh, items, right? Big size items. Um, I see a small problem in the program. Mm -hmm. um, J is, in case is the counter for, for how many of each count it, it is. That's mm -hmm. how many times it should print out, not what it should print out. What it should print out is defined by count I am oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. Yes, go, go ahead, fix it, fix it. I, right? Shouldn't be J, it should be I. No, 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 no. Find, find is the linear thing, right? So we want to get rid of find. Find is a linear function, and uh, just I, the character I. So if if I, you know, if, if a lowercase a, I think is I don't know. Let's say ASCII value 121. I will be 121. If you know I, if if lowercase a occurred ten times, then um, counts of one twenty one should be ten. Are we are we together so far? Yeah. If lowercase a occurred ten times mm -hmm. in the name, then counts of one twenty one, which is the ASCII value of lowercase a, should be ten after your first for loop is done. Uh, are are we cool so far? Yeah. I think I got oh, it. Right. No, not you, Daniel. Everybody else needs to say that too. Come on, are, are we all on the same page? After the first for loop, it's just, it's just going through this, this name and incrementing the corresponding cells in counts. And, and, and counts has 256 cells, one for each character, right? So, so uppercase A would have character, you know, the cell number 65, actually 66, right? Starts at zero. Right, uppercase A is that, and, and so on. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, 65, 65, yeah, 66 cell, which is you know index 65. So each character has a cell, and they're all zero. But when you go through the name for each letter, you're going to say, oh, uh, I got I got an A, so I got to increment 65, uh, the 65th cell. Uh, I got a B, I got to increment the 66th cell, and so on and so forth. And when you're done with all the letters in the name, your uh, array of counts should have the right numbers in that. Yes or no? If you've never seen a number, that should still be zero. If you've seen a number n times, that ASCII value should have n in there. Not ASCII value, the cell indexed by that ASCII value should have n in there. Is, is, is that okay? Are, are you guys okay with that? 
Okay, got it. Yeah, Giorgio said got it. Well, you know, you got to hit the space bar and say yes because I think, um, uh, I think, um, yeah, I can't look at the chat window at the same time. Yeah, thank you. You, you don't need the, that anymore. Um, so, is everybody convinced that it'll work? No. Um, Looks like people yeah. are not convinced. You don't have to do anything more, Daniel. I think that should work, right? I mean, we, we try and run it. Try and run it. Now you don't even have to worry about spaces and all these things, even uppercase. Uh, in fact, get rid of the, yeah, you don't have lowercase, right? So it's really cool. Now, if you run it, uh, you can provide names in uppercase and lowercase and it'll still work, right? In fact, you can have numbers, yeah, names, anything you want. Oh, something's wrong. Um, we oh, yeah, you're printing everything. It looks like you're printing all of the size you want. J equals zero, J. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, if, 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 if counts, of, no, counts, of J is, yes, J, J equals one, yeah. Because, what yes, yes, yes. Adding to it even. Yeah, because you have less than or equal to. Because you have less than or equal to. Oh, but you can start, you can start at zero, J equals zero, and end at uh, less than, not less than or equal to. I think that'll be better. No? Because then zero. One. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll figure this out. Okay, so sixty-five. Um, today. Hmm. My computer just being a bit laggy today. Hmm? Uh, what internet or your computer? That, I think it's the internet, Daniel, because you're you're breaking up when I hear you. Well, let me make sure I'm on the right, uh, you know, Wi-Fi channel here. Give me a sec. Is, is Daniel coming through uh, clear to you guys? I don't know. For me, yeah, I am, I am on the right Wi-Fi. I should have 25. Mostly clear. Yeah, never mind. Um, but right. uh, does it run now? I think that's just my like, Um. Yeah, like here it is. It, what, the only why did you say there's a bug? Why, why did you say there's a bug? Like, like the only problem is that it's sorting AM all the uppercase letters first, but that's not really, but that's just. Accurate. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's the standard behavior. That is the behavior you get from system sort too, right? From if you run sort okay. uh, on the terminal, that's what you'll get. Because ASCII values of uppercase letters are before you come, you know, earlier than the, uh, or smaller than the ASCII values of the lowercase letters. So yeah, that's, that's, how, that's how ASCII letters are sorted. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think I showed you, but you can just go to a terminal and type a manual, or go to Google. Uh, uh, hey, Daniel, open a Google window uh, on your browser and type uh, man ASCII, right? At, at the end of the day, it, regardless of how it sorts, what is important is what your desired output is, depending yes. on what your purpose of your program is. I am. We can all sort in, I mean, we could sort backwards. We could sort in any arbitrary order. Yes. Um, it just all, the, more importantly is that it is sorting in the way that we are desiring it to at the moment. And if we want to change that sort, then we change our algorithm to reflect that. That's it. Yeah. The, the core, the core uh, algorithm, um, which, which encodes Daniel's insight is already there. Right. And, and then, you know, improvements, we can make improvements to end of days to come. Really? And I think uh, one key piece that like Daniel hit upon right as he started his presentation was um, his method of sorting uh, is, uh, one of the, is, is one of the fastest ways that we know at the moment, uh, which depending, you know, when it gets to a point where we're sorting many things or long things, saving time can be very important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in fact, so, and I'm glad he chose uh, sorting really because sorting is one of the hardest problems. Well, not hardest problems is one of the most, uh, uh, easy to understand as well as uh, as well as infused with so much subtlety and richness for you to keep thinking about for a long time. Sorting is um, and and sorting is inherently, uh, if you think about it, uh, and we'll cover this right several times in two B, uh, maybe in two C. You know, I teach this in two C. Um, sorting is inherently uh, a quadratic issue, right? It's, you cannot get a it's, it's, I, I, inherently uh, without any cleverness built into it sorting has got to be quadratic, 
Uh, it cannot, and, and then after you build in some cleverness, you can bring it down to log linear. Uh, log linear we can do now, right? Log linear means the time taken to do something is n log n instead of just n, is n squared like before. Um, but uh, but I, I, can you get better than n log n? Yes, you can, but then you have to use domain knowledge, right? Like what Daniel has done now, uh, some, something you know about the distribution of numbers, right? Or the things that you want to sort, something you know. If you exploit that, then you can uh, implement even faster sorting. But uh, all said and done, I don't believe you can get a sorting algorithm better than linear, right? Linear is the best ever you can get for sorting. Why, why is that? Can, can someone tell me, right? So these are the things that you would be thinking about when you design your own algorithms and you're uh, trying to figure out the efficiency, right? Efficiency of your program, your own program. You think, um, can it be better than this? Can it ever be? Because if you, know, if you do something and you think, there's, there's absolutely no possible way it can be better than that. I can prove, I can prove mathematically that this is the best way you can get. Then you're not going to look at, you know, uh, modifications and improvements and so on. Um, but sometimes what you can do is, well, um, that's what I have, but I, someone just told me inside information, right? Someone, you know, on the racetracks, uh, someone just came to me and said, hey, you know, um, one-eyed filly is going <laughs> to, you know, one-legged filly is going to win the race today, right? Some tip, some tip. Um, so that's information that other people don't know or, you know, or haven't exploited yet. So that, with that information, I can make my uh, algorithm faster. So that's what Daniel has exploited here. So he's exploited uh, the information that, uh, he only has a fixed number of uh, candidates, fixed number of candidates um, that he needs to sort. Okay, that's a very powerful, this is very useful information, right? And, 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 and it, t it took his algorithm all the way from n squared, not even to n log n, all the way to linear, which is a phenomenal achievement. But it is inherently, you cannot get better than linear. And the reason you can't get better than linear is that you cannot say you've finished your sorting until you've examined every single element, yes? Because what happens if you've sorted, you know, half the elements and the rest of the half, the other half is not in the right place. It's not sorted. So the only time you can confidently say that you've sorted the whole damn thing is if you've looked at every single thing, right? So if you've looked at n elements, then obviously you've taken time that is proportional to n. Yeah. So it can, so sorting can never get faster than linear. It's get, it, it has to be a linear function of n until someone told you, you know, some inside information saying, hey, I've got an array. Uh, and you need to sort it. Uh, only the three elements in the in the top uh, three indices are unsorted. The rest of it is sorted. Then you can get a faster than linear sorting algorithm, right? Because you only have to sort three elements. The rest of it, you know, for it to be sure. But otherwise, it it is the best you can get is linear. And this is um, this is in that uh, family of algorithms, which takes the best you have and then exploits domain knowledge to make it even better. Okay. So yeah, do an ASCII for a uh, yeah, man ASCII, not sort man ASCII. ASCII, man ASCII. Yeah, type man ASCII into the address bar. Just type man ASCII in the address bar. No, no, just type it in the man ASCII address bar. Don't go to these, uh, you know, sites. Yeah. Man ASCII, just type it there because I think Google hits are probably um, more, okay, well, you're using, duck, okay. All right, that's fine. Even, yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. It should, it should it, that, I think you should still get better results. Um, Oh, your computer is like seriously screwed up today. All right. Uh, yeah, that should do it. You know, Linux manual page. Uh, in Linux and that one one time, it took Windows about eight minutes slower operation. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe you've got a virus or something. Um, okay. All right. So you see that those are the ASCII codes. No, you don't. Those are the ASCII codes, right? So you'll see that uppercase A is uh, 65 in decimal. Okay. And uh, hexadecimal, I don't know, 41 maybe. Uh, so if you scroll down 65 and 41, you'll find A. Anyway, you'll find it there, okay? You'll find it there, and those are the ASCII codes. So does, does that make a, a sense to you guys? Are you like uh, reasonably clear on what's going on? We'll take about five minutes to discuss this program more because you know it's got some subtleties, and then we'll move on to Giorgio. Right, Giorgio, are you getting ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. All right. If, if anybody else has any questions or things they'd like to chime in on uh, with Daniel's program, you should do that. Uh, I would like you to, um, I'd like Daniel to post a link to this program somewhere. 
um, put it on Replit or cpp.sh or collaborate or one of those places so that people can take a look. At, well, actually, just post it on Reddit, okay? Don't, yeah, just, just, this is a short piece of code, right? You can just take it and format it correctly and post it on Reddit so people don't have to click and go elsewhere to look at it. Um, I would highly recommend that you study this program uh, and understand exactly how it works because it, it, it's got a number of subtleties to it and it is written in a very nice way. So I think you should, uh, it, it will benefit. We'll, I'm, I'm pretty sure will benefit by understanding this program, okay? So thank, thank you very much, Daniel. If, you've, um, you know, if, if you're done, um, we can move on to Giorgio. Uh, this was a good demo, thank you. Thank you, and I'm sorry for taking about an hour to explain. We took an hour? Oh my gosh, like all right. Um, uh, you know, honestly, it's not your fault. I think I started talking and then I basically monopolized a whole chunk of your time. All right, so Giorgio, let's go. Um, I'll just make sure not to say anything, not not to say much, okay? You guys talk and, and cut me out, right? If I start talking, just say, hey, Anand, I got to finish. Okay, just say that and, and I'll stop. My program, yeah. is, my, my program is pretty short. I mean, it's pretty simple. Okay, so. go, go, go ahead. Yeah, take, 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 take the screen. We want to see it. Uh, can you see the screen? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Okay, so I basically um, uh, coded a average grade calculator using arrays. Uh, so I on line five, I created a an array of uh, integers, and then uh, I put in a float data type. Mm -hmm. uh, so that I can um, sum up all the all the grades and and then give the average of the five grades that the user put in. So the four uh, the four loop here could take could actually take the first the first input and then adds it to the second input, adds it to the third input, and then do this uh, as long as i is uh, nice nice smaller than five. And then, uh, and then I I created two other flow data types: the average, which is takes the sum and then divides it by five, and then the per the percentage, which is basically the same value because it's over a hundred, so it's the same value but it's it's two different things: one's the average, one's the percentage over hundred, and then it prints out uh, the values. Nice. All right, go, go ahead and run it, and then we'll take a look at is any changes people want to make. So let's say computer science, we got 90, let's say 80. So it gives hey. us oh, you got an, are you missing a new line there? Yeah, at the end, you're missing a new line after the final CO. Oh, yeah, after the... Yeah, and also after average mark, I think. Yeah, so here's something that I find useful is to uh, ask as much as possible. You're not gonna be able to do it everywhere. As much as possible, always use new lines at the end, not at the beginning. Um, oh, okay, so. Yeah, cosmetically it looks better, I think, and also intuitively it reads better. Got it, okay. And also the first one, yeah, yeah, first one also. Yeah, get rid of that. Yeah, so. Um, oh, no, you need a new line at the end. Um, average mark equals, and then get rid of the slash n. Get rid of the slash n and put the new put the slash n after average. Yeah. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Let's say for the sake of the. Yay! Oh, um, 84%. Okay, so um, um, this is very nice. Um, does anybody have any um, suggestions for uh, improving this program? This is a nice program, okay? Um, but um, does anybody have any suggestions they'd like to see changes made to this program? I have one or two, mostly cosmetic. Um, okay. But you know, someone else should go if they want to first. 
Um, like this is a very minor thing, but um, and um, I think it would look slightly better if there was no space between eighty-four and the percent sign. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, in the, you get rid of the space, okay? Yeah, okay. What else? No, don't run it. Don't run it. You know, this is, yeah, read it because we don't have to run it for every single change. We'll make all the changes and then run it. What else? I guess like back to Anon, your uh, previous remark about having the end line um, in the beginning I, from oh, yeah, we the change all of these and yeah. then put it in. Oh, yeah, 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 those guys. Yeah, get rid of those. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, don't, yeah, get rid of the new line after the uh, prompts uh, where you have this uh, computer science colon um, because uh, what I find is that it is usually. Um, more appealing for users if they enter a number on the same line as a prompt. So don't, yeah, get rid of the slash, oh, okay. leave the space. Yeah, leave the space. Uh, so this way. So, so I put the new line, the uh, input. I think that's fine. Right? Is, 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 uh, uh, don't, yeah, don't run it. This is a couple more changes. Anybody else? Okay, so I have one uh, suggestion. Um, you know where you calculate the percentage? You're dividing by 500 and multiplying by 100. So yes. you can just get rid of the multiplying by 100 and divide by five instead, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, not well, because then it becomes like the, the, like the average, but I wanted to try like, an, like another uh, process, even though it's gonna, uh, uh, it's gonna, show us the same value. So I, I did this just- Oh, for the I see, I see. I see, you already have that. And, and then you yeah, just- yeah, yeah. But the average is already a percentage because you're entering percentages, right? Yeah, you're because entering I'm entering the grade over a hundred. So it's basically the same value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, oh, but of course your program is more general because you know the, the scores don't need to be out of a hundred, I think. Um, they could be out of 200 too. And, no, no, it has to be out of 100. Um, yeah. oh, but never mind. But the other change I had, uh, suggestion really, was that um, kind of cosmetic, it's purely cosmetic. Um, when you're editing a program or, an, uh, or a web page, um, usually for HTML and CSS, people indent by one space um, because you, know, you have so many indentation levels. In programming, two is a is a bare minimum that most programmers use right so indent by two spaces not by one um, two three four i think i found many programs indented in, in it like that very very few computer programs indented with one space um, so make them to yeah but you don't have to do it now but you can do it in your own time yeah i got it okay all right good good i i think this is a, a good program please share this also yeah, sure. Yeah. I already shared it on Reddit. I can. Oh, you did. Uh, you did. Yeah, I, I didn't see that, Giorgio. Thank you. Yeah. Giorgio, can you run it again, actually? Yeah, sure. Who was that, Momo? Yeah. Wow, I'm getting really good at recognizing his voices now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I didn't realize the, the line would break. Oh, but no, mm -hmm. it, it, it didn't break automatically. It was the enter that you pressed. You know, as you enter five zero and you're uh, gonna yeah. I see. Oh shoot. That gotcha. Is... You're building it into your code, right? You're building that into your code. Okay, makes sense. Got it. In fact, let's let's, let's I want to show you something, okay? Uh, run it again. Okay. Now uh, here's here's so so don't wait for a sec, okay? Now uh, you're gonna see um, the uh, something that we talked about two classes ago. Right, two classes ago, we talked about something, and you're going to see a see a, a manifestation of that behavior right now. Okay, now enter five numbers on the same line, one after another, space separated. So, computer oh, okay. science, I expect so you to gonna, get a hundred. I expect you to get a hundred yeah. in computer science. So, write a hundred. It's going to take the first, the first, uh, the first term. Try it. Try it. Try it. Try it. Try it. The space. Space. Okay, whatever the next subject is. Well, the only disadvantage here is you don't know what the subjects are, right? But yeah. go ahead and type it, type it. Yeah, 50 or whatever it is. Ty type in five numbers. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it fine? Yeah. I think mm -hmm. you got fixed now. It doesn't matter. You can give it extra. It's just oh, going to ignore no, the last one. You can, you can give it more. You can give it more. It'll just ignore the extra ones. Because you're only reading five, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, hit enter. There you go. Oh, so it automatically got... Yeah, yeah, I see what happened. We we discussed this like two like a week yeah. ago. Yeah. So but, how do you how do you prevent that from happening? Uh, by using a get line. Yeah, um, exactly. Thank you. Um, is, is everybody on the same page now? Are, are we clear? I'm so I'm I'm so happy we came up with this um this issue in class, right? So Giorgio wrote this program, and then we I had a real life opportunity to see the effect of one of these things we discussed two classes ago. Exactly. Okay, so we could use a get line, and then we yeah. could we could adjust it based on that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, for the demo, uh, and I'm glad that um, you got to ask your classmates to watch this video, right? Because Georgia will post his code, but this discussion that we just had about you know spaces and CN and you know all that, going back to a couple of classes and so on, that most people won't know if they just look at the code that Georgia will post in Reddit or has posted in Reddit. So, but if they if uh, tell them to watch the video at I don't know, find the number of seconds or you know the timestamp in YouTube and tell them you know, my program is being discussed at you know, seven minutes or 35 minutes and, and people can click on that timestamp and watch this and then they'll also see this experiment that we did. Sure. Thank you, thank you, Giorgio. Is, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, this is basically, I mean, uh, if anyone has, in, has a question regarding arrays or for, for Quest 4, I'm currently on Quest 4, so. Uh, feel free to ask. I mean, I'd be happy to help. Thank you. I have one other suggestion. Um, sure. So, uh, why are you um, not using like a for loop to, to loop through all the prompts? Like, I feel like that could um, make the program even more, more expandable because right now you have, have like just C out and C in as and taking in at least on sequence when a loop would allow you to have just a list of of them like if you used a for loop to iterate over each prompt and then store its response uh, um, so you um, into the yeah, marks array oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I see what you're saying yeah I could probably adjust it and uh, do it as you said like create a for loop for each uh, each subject and then it, go, it does the same steps each time the user enters the number. Yeah. yeah, I can do that. Yeah, thank you. Okay, other than that, I mean, I don't know. Great. Thank you, thank you, Giorgio. I think Kim wanted to go next, yes? Yeah. All right, take take the screen and, and go ahead and let's take a look at your code. Give it a second. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, yes, I can. Uh, wait, it's the wrong screen. Yeah, I can see your okay. code also. So since I'm st I'm taking math to be so I wanna make a program that relates to the matrix. So initially, I was gonna make a program that can operate the the addition and subtraction of two matrix that why you see two arrays here, but but it would get like too long, so I don't want to like use too much time. So I just just made this program that can like show the matrix based on the elements that the user types in. So here, like. I got like the array here with like hundred and hundred. It means like the it's like a maximum rows and columns that number number of rows and columns like yeah. And then I asked the user the numbers of the rows and columns, and then I asked the elements of the match matrix. So here for the, for the loops here like so for the first row which means like the x equals zero is the first row. I asked them 
so every time the user type an element, the y will plus one, which means it moves to the second column in the first row. So after this, so after finished all the columns, it moves to the second rows and so on until the measure is finished. So here is basically the same thing. And I see how the numbers that the user type in. So let me just run this program. So here, let's just make a two by two matrix. So A00 is, which means like the, the upper left value of the matrix. So I will type one and two, three, four. And then that's it at the matrix. Wait, I think I can fix it in here. What are you doing? Oh, I see. You're just putting spaces. Um, I thought I saw a problem here. No, no, I don't. I don't. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Just indentation, I guess, and and formatting, which you can, you know, uh, fix at some point. Um, so uh, I one small suggestion I have, and I think we went over this in a previous class, is that uh, for integer va valued variables, I try to use. Um, variable names like i and j, not x and y, because x and y to me, um, no, don't do it now. Don't. Okay. Yeah. Actually, is, is this replete? Try, try, try refactoring in replete. Let's see if that works. Okay. Yeah. Double click. Rename mm -hmm. to rename to i. I. Okay. Yay. Okay. Do the other one. Okay. Oh, but you're using uh, I here. Oh my gosh, we basically screwed it up. Just, just undo it two times. Just do Command Z or Control Z two times. No, no, just no, no, don't, don't. I, I just undo, undo two times. You get the X and Y back. Well, I can. Oh, you can't. Um, bummer. I think I just screwed up your program because now if you replace the I, it's also going to replace the loop counters. Oh, uh, hang on, hang on. Oh, no, no, you're right, you're right. Yeah, okay, uh, here, uh, here's a suggestion I have, okay? Don't declare I and J there, because I and J are your loop counters, right? You're not using them anywhere else. So get rid of the declaration from there. Uh, just put a semicolon after the uh, columns in, on line six. Just get rid of the semicolon, uh, yeah. After columns, put in a semicolon and get rid of the rest of the line. Yeah, yeah I and J should go. Get rid of, delete I and J. Semicolon, enter. Enter. Okay, now where you have uh, for i equals zero, declare i there. So say uh, for int i equals zero. Not there, not there, not there. Inside the for loop. There, in the, in the for loop body. Yeah, yeah. Line 15. 15 and 16. Yeah, line 15 and 16. And 20, uh, does he need to redeclare for 23 and 24? Yes, yes. Because, and that's the beauty of it, right? Because um, for, uh, that's what you don't get with a while loop. Um, in a for loop, you're able to declare the loop counter right there, and then uh, it guarantees that the loop counter is only visible in there. And you can so reuse it somewhere the, else. When the for loop completes, the, yes. it's almost as if that i and j disappear, so to speak? Yes, yes, the scope, oh. it's, it's a scoping of the variable. And then when it gets to line 23 and uh, reintroduces a new for loop, a, yes. a new i and a new j appear. Yeah, yeah, they're all brand new now. So that's how you can restrict the scope, restrict the scope of variables. Now, as you get more and more experience with programming and you start cutting larger and larger programs, um, this will become increasingly important because uh, anytime, right? Anytime you're, if you're trying to make something, if you have like a hundred trillion items in front of your, uh, you know, on, on your desktop, it's hard to manage all of these things, right? So when you want to bake a cake, you only, only want the ingredients on your countertop so you can mix them. So um, when you get to advanced programming, you really want to keep your uh, programming desk uh, clean with minimal, uh, the small, the, the, the minimum amount of variables you need. Um, and you use scope, uh, scope delimiting, right? Scope uh, restriction to good effect there. So you can say, I want these variables, but I don't want these variables to hang on all the time. Because if they hang on all the time, I got to keep looking at them, right? So I want them to come in, do their job, and then die. Come in, do the job, go away. And that way you can only be focusing on a small bit here. So that's why uh, scope, uh, reduction or scope, uh, you know, a scope minification is actually a very useful technique to master. Okay, get it. 
All right. So you can fix up the indentation later. Okay. The indentation is all screwed up. And also, uh, why, why do we have like this weird syntax with two curly braces on the same line? Something is wonky there. Wait, where? Which line? Yeah, on line 19, you 19. have two curly braces. Why do you have two? One closes his C out and one closes. Oh. No, it closes the two for loops. Sorry. Oh, I said, you know, take the second, yeah, go before, you know, hit enter before the second one. Hit enter before the second for loop. Uh, yeah, enter. Okay. Now, um, and then put the C out on the next line too. You have a C out immediately on the same line as the opening brace. Line 17. No, no, not that one. Line 17. Go to line 17. Okay. I see, yeah, after the brace, after the brace, hit enter. Hit enter after the brace, after the brace, not, not, not after the brace. Yeah. Brace, brace, uh, opening brace, curly brace. Before C out. Yep, there you go. Okay. Now, yeah, fix up the indentation of the C in. It should be lined up with C out. Yeah, get rid of the blank line above it. Okay. And then the, the second closing brace should be lined up with a for statement, not with this for statement, the other one. No, 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 no. Next, next line, next line. Hit enter. Line it up. Under you want the words. indentation to match the first four from line 15. Yeah. One, hit, hit the backspace once. Once. Hit the backspace once. Backspace, one not space. Backspace, backspace. There you go. One, one more, more. One more, one more. No, no. Backspace. Back, back, back. One more back. There you see, how, you see how it's lined up with the same four from 15 oh. now? It's, yeah. so that way it's easier for you to debug your code. We, we, in this case, it, you don't have to because you know it's a simple program and you can see it. But when you get to more uh, bigger programs and the logic is not immediately obvious, these are the things that will help you, right? Getting it right, formatted right, will help you debug your code. Anand, in terms of um, kind of stylistic conventions, mm -hmm. does it matter for an opening brace to be on the same line as the for statement? I know some people put it on the line below it as well. It's up to you. It's up to you. you. You just be consistent. You can do, but you can if you really want. You know, have both styles in the same program. Um, but ideally, yeah. Ideally, whatever style you choose, make it uniform. Just stick with your it, yeah. So that not only for yourself debugging, but also for if uh, if anyone else is ever looking at your code, it's easier uh, readability, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, this is the thing I find. Um, I've I've uh, found is uh, people, um, you know. Uh, who aren't 100% sure whether they've got the logic right, right? Whether they've thought clearly about the problem and solved it and, and the program is bulletproof and perfect, they'll write readable code, right? Because they want readers of the program to not fudge around and think a lot about how the program looks or they want them to understand the program first because uh, well, after they understand the program, they'd be able to see its true worth. Uh, or uh, they'd be able to suggest improvements that are really useful to you, right? But I've seen a lot of newbies, right? Beginning, beginning programmers uh, who are not sure of their code, uh, who think their you know, the code is buggy or you know has problems, uh, and those programmers invariably uh, are tempted to write uh, obtuse code, which is which is hard to read, indented badly. Uh, and I think the, maybe an intent might be there. There might be, I want to make my program really hard to read because there's so many bugs here that if people understand my program, they'll point out all these bugs. So I better make sure that my program is really hard to understand so people can see the bugs in there. Okay, so, um, so by, by making it clear, open, right, open. Everybody can see what I've got because I don't have any problems. That's the statement you're making. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, uh, what time is it now? Yeah, we've still got time. We got time for more people to come and demo, right? So let me take a look at the chat window. Let's see if someone has uh, volunteered. Anybody else? Who, who else wants to go? Thank, thank you very much, uh, Ken, for uh, you know uh, taking the time to show your program here. Are you going to share the code too on Reddit? Ken? Always share it. Oh, you already shared it? Okay. No, I would say if you have time um, um, and you're able to, um, just edit that post to make these cosmetic changes that we talked about. So that, you know, later on, if someone looks at the code, they'll, you know, they'll see that it's actually nicely formatted code. And, okay. and yeah. yeah. Got it. Thanks. Uh, who else? Who else wants to go? Uh, I can go. Okay. Who is this? Uh, Sameet. 
Sumit, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, take, take the screen. Hmm. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, yeah, I, I can see your screen. The font is a bit too small, but. Oh, all right, so um, after seeing Daniel's code, um, a professor, he said something about the fastest sorting time being n log n, and I wasn't too sure what that was. So I wanted to see what that looked like. So I started coding a little bit and I ended up making this and I'm pretty sure it's um, the n log n. So uh, basically it's a sorting oh, you have a function algorithm. Sort. It's a sorting algorithm. So we have these numbers and then we call the sorting method. So first we're just gonna look through all the numbers and then use binary search to put it into the right place. And since binary search is um, log n time, we uh the overall time would be n log n <clears throat> so we first call the sorting method then we go through this for loop and if we're looking at the first um a number in the list we just want to add it anywhere in the list because there's nothing in the list yet otherwise we want to find the correct index using binary search um in binary search, uh, this is the binary search method up here. And basically, because it's um, a sorted list, we're able to find where to put the item in logarithmic time. Um, I'm going to go over this method in a second. But all you need to know is that this will give us the correct index in logarithmic time. Then after we get that index, we want to come back here and just put it in the right place. Um, I just wrote this program like a couple of minutes ago, so it's not perfect. So the first number doesn't get put in the right spot. So to fix that, I added this extra case afterwards, and then that fix the, fixes the issue. So if we go ahead and run the program, you can see we have this big list of numbers, and it just returns <clears throat> or prints out the numbers in um, a increasing order. Yeah, so that's it. Um, where is it searching? Uh, where is it doing the bin search in, in sorted num? Uh, oh, so hang up on. Here I have the binary. No, no, no. I, let's not look at the logic for binary search. I'm going to assume, we'll assume that, you know, it's going to uh, search properly. So uh, what are you doing here? I'm trying to understand um, nums.size, sorted nums. If, it is, if, if, uh, if the sorted num size is equal to zero, why would sorted num size? Oh, it is it is zero, right? You don't have to do that if statement at all, right? Because you know when you just declare it, it's it, it's by default. Oh, you got a loop there. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it starts off with zero, and it's not going to be zero after the first insert. So you can just get rid of the if statement. It's not it's not even needed, right? Um. Why do you need that if statement there? Because. I guess we could like in here, we could just say sorted nums. So you're just saying you're the if statement? Yeah, you can. Because I, I don't see that having any effect. It's it's basically an effectless statement, right? Okay. Because the first time you hit it, you're guaranteed to push back because we know that sorted nums will be empty. As oh, okay. Yeah. So just get rid of the whole if else statement. Well, I would get rid of the if first. Just get rid of the if. And then we should also look at the logic, um, right? And any indented properly, yeah. And then let's, yeah, get rid of the else word only. Yeah, okay. now what do you do? So you are, uh, for int equals zero, you're going, through, uh, going uh, through each of those numbers, and then you're finding the index of that number in a sorted num. And if the number exists, sorted num pushback, bin search, Nums of i. Okay, so you're going through each of the numbers in numbers of i, and you're going to find that number. If the number exists, you're going to push it in, uh, and you're doing that sequentially for each of those numbers. Okay, and bin search is logarithmic, and uh, bin search is logarithmic, and then you're doing it n times, so it's n log n. Okay, all right. It's a um, yeah, good <laughs> good analysis of the runtime of the program too, which is correct. Um, and it also works when you have duplicates in the thing, um, which is nice. Thank you. Um, 
thank you for sharing that as a sort of nuns. Well, the, the, uh, the only comment I would have here, Sumit, mm -hmm. is it Sumit or Sumit? Uh, Sumit. E-E-T? E-T, yeah. Yeah, um, is that you're using a bunch of features here that we haven't covered and, and uh, many of the beginning students might, you know, might uh, be overwhelmed um, by it. Like you were calling iterator methods and um, where is it? Not insert, uh, that's easy to understand. Uh, and even bin search um, and pop back. No, I saw something else somewhere. That was, um, and Is it the sorted nums at the begin? No, we used it already last class, right? I was, I, I, I thought I saw something else there that was uh, bin search dot insert. Oh, well, never mind. Um, it looks all right. Um, you should, yeah, you should just share the code and um, and uh, and absolutely do talk about that in the forums. Yeah. So I think I I, I like this. It's it's nice. And I think it does the job. Yeah, it does do, does the job, and it's uh, log linear in, in and sorts it in log linear time. Very nice. Cool. Does anybody else have any questions about um, Sumit's code? I mean, talk, take a look at that. So, you know, so oh, I think it's because we're, I'm just standing. I'm, I'm sitting here and talking, and I think the squirrel just didn't come because it's scared of the noise or something. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, um, I'll do the, um, all right, so I think we're almost done, right? So we're done. I think we're, uh, this is the end of class. I, oh no, we got 15 minutes, <laughs> we got 15. Look at that, every time we run out of time and every class we run out of time and now we actually have time to uh, talk about stuff. All right, so anybody else wants to go, you can go now. Uh, if uh, Sumit wants to talk more about his code, uh, please do. Uh, if you have questions about Sumit's code, uh, ask him to put his code up uh, on the screen again and you can talk about that. Uh, otherwise, I think what we should do is, um, I don't know, uh, what would you guys like to do? Uh, do you wanna see another demo? Um, you know, If you have a particular concept that you'd like me to demonstrate in code, I'm happy to do that. Um, uh, if you have, um, or, you know, not code. If you want to want me to talk about that, I'm happy to talk about that too. Uh, if somebody else wants to go and do a demo, um, please do take the screen. Got 15 whole minutes to do. So next, on, on next week, uh, is, is next week, week five? Yeah, I think it's week five next week, isn't it? Yes. Wow. So that means the week after that is a midterm. You guys, you guys have to do you have a midterm in week six, and um, yeah. So next week we'll cover uh, functions. Okay, I mean we've been using functions all the time, but I think that there is a uh, we need to know um, how functions work uh, and what kinds of parameter passing um, techniques are there, right? So when functions work, they, you give them a parameter and say, hey, here's something, go ahead and do your job. But there's different ways in which you can give it that thing, right? We'll talk about those. And we'll also talk about what happens when you call a function, what happens under the covers? Um, as there's gonna be a bit of computer architecture uh, related uh, discussion there. I'm happy to go into that uh, in detail if you want, it's because it's really interesting the way these things happen. Um, but they're not part of the formal syllabus for CS2A, right? The exam is not going to ask you, oh, you know, what happens? What are the internal data structures that are uh, changed when you call a function known? So, uh, yeah, this will be outside of, uh, you know, the, uh, the scope of CS2A, but I'm happy to talk about what happens uh, when you call a function at the machine level, right? At, at, the, architect at the machine level, the CPU level, what, how the instructions get executed, what the stack is, the program stack is and uh, how the stack um, affects uh, your decisions about how you're going to design your program, right? Whether you're gonna have a recursive program or an iterative program and all those things, right? So they are is marvelous things to, um, to, to start playing with. And very soon we'll get past that too so that we can start looking at uh, creating objects. All right, so yeah, what else, what else? Anybody else want to pipe up? It have doesn't have to be about um, the stuff that we've covered so far, because you know that's all. This is arrays. The rest of uh, th things to do with arrays is up to you for uh, to experiment and find out. 
So go ahead, you know, do lots of experiments. Look at Daniel's code, George's code, Ken's code, Tumit's code. Play with it. You know, take the code, make changes, run it, and see. Hey, I made this change, and it did. You know, change the behavior. Why? You know, what happens? And and so play with the code, and that's the only way. Now, uh, and I have to reiterate this every class, right? By the end of next week, you have to be completely conversant with all of this. But and even if you're a total beginner, you're only starting today and you have no idea what the hell C++ is, it is possible, okay? So it is completely possible. You don't have to be the most brilliant person in the world to, uh, to, uh, to master everything we've done in, in just the time that's left before the midterm, right? So by the end of week six, you should be completely conversant with that because you know from then on, I'm not going to spell out each word. Um, yeah, I'll talk about what's gonna be on the midterm, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, um, so, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, all of this after the midterm, we're just going to be using the concepts without going into the concepts, meaning we're going to use everything we've learned so far as the letters of the alphabet that we're stringing together to form words. And we're not thinking, thinking about letters anymore, we're thinking about words, right? So, we want to get to that stage. And then, when, you know, when you're thinking about words, that'll take you until the end of this quarter right? Uh, next quarter, we'll start thinking about not characters, not words, but sentences, right? So in CS2B, we're going to think about how can we take what we've got, all these letters and words, and make sentences? And uh, so that's the analogy. This is a met metaphor, right? Uh, so we'll do that. And when, what happens in CS2C? After you've mastered CS2B, so you've, you know letters, you know how to string them together to form words, and then in 2B, you've also learned how to string the words together to form sentences, right? It looks like that's all you need to do, right? So like when you learn to speak, you're pretty much done. You're able to communicate, right? So what could CS2C possibly teach you? So CS2C will take you one more predictable step later is to say, okay, well, you went from letters to words, words to sentences in 2B, in 2C, you're going to go from sentences to stories, okay? So you're going to take all the sentences that you're able to create in CS2B and make stories. Um, and, you know, write entire stories with, with these. And that's, and that's where you want to go, right? That's where everybody wants to go, right? Everybody who learns a language, they all, ultimately, they want to tell their story. And that's why we learn languages. And that's where you're headed. Uh, so in the midterm, uh, Alexis had a question. Uh, so, um, what's going to be on the midterm? Everything we've covered in class uh, and in uh, Michael's modules uh, up to objects, okay, up to objects. Um, I don't think I'll ask you questions about arrays in the midterm. Or maybe I do, I don't know. But it won't be, you know, uh, deep questions about arrays, right? So, stuff that we've talked about so far at most. Um, but uh, those are the questions you can expect to see in the midterm. Um, everything we've talked about so far, you know, um, and um, so Michael had uh, a couple of questions in the midterm, and I'm actually using. So uh, I inherited Michael's question bank, right? So he had a very nice question bank uh, of you. Know, uh, well, you, usually what people do is when they get these question banks, they'll say, oh, I'm going to go with my own questions. I'm going to delete all those questions and start with my own questions. That I think is a very uh, a foolish thing to do in many, from many perspectives because, um, you know, it's, it's, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, as, as the saying goes. Um, there's so many good things, it's, it's good questions in the, in the question bank. Uh, you add on to it. Don't throw it away. And, and so I, I, still, I inherited and I keep a lot of his questions. So uh, many of my, you'll see many of Michael's questions. The only problem with that is that uh, in, when Michael taught this course, uh, he was also very particular about stylistic issues, um, which is really important, right? Um, but then I realized after a couple of quarters of teaching this, it's really hard to enforce stylistic issues on students because at the end of the day, what I see is most students just end up complaining, saying, hey, you know, Anand doesn't like it or he gives me negative points for coding in my style versus this style, when it's really ultimately boils down to just inconsistencies, right? I, you know, I say, don't do this negative one points, and now I don't even give negative points, right? So, uh, but I used to say, well, you know, you did this really horrible formatting there as a negative one. And, uh, and then people will get upset. Students get upset saying, hey, my algorithm is correct. It does the right job. It works. But you still gave me, didn't give me full points because I had this you know, stylistic issue. Um, and then I realized that you know, I was causing more, um, more 
despair <laughs> uh, amongst the students. So I don't, I, I stopped uh, grading you on stylistic issues, but the, uh, one of the side effects of that is that um, I, took, I did take the time to go over all the questions in Michael's question bank and remove the questions to do with style. Um, but I think there's maybe one or two that squeaked through and I missed. So if you, uh, and by the way, in the midterm, nobody gets the same questions, right? Everybody will get different questions. So if you wanna say, you wanna talk to your uh, classmate and say, hey, what did you get? What was your answer for question number seven? Uh, chances are you're not going to get the right answer. It's, it's all objective, right? So the midterm is not like freestyle uh, programming. It's all objective. You've got to run code in your head. Uh, you, of course, you can run it on a computer on the side, and that's fine. But uh, you're not going to have to code in the midterm. You're going to have to code in your head or on a computer, take the results, uh, digest it in your head, and type in the answer. So all objective style. Um, so, yeah, but I, what I was saying before was there's m maybe a couple of uh, style-related questions. Uh, if that happens, you got to let me know and say, hey, Anand, um, so my question number seven was to do with style. Uh, can you uh, reinstate that point? Okay, so that means you just got a freebie. You got a free point, right? If you got a style related question, you got a free point. Uh, so there's a bit of luck thrown into the midterm too. Uh, so you can take your, uh, you know, uh, you can do, you can answer whatever you want to that question and I'll give you that point back if you get such a question, right? So if you get a style related question, let me know. But other than that, uh, you know, expressions, uh, if statements, uh, looping, uh, incrementing, right? What's the difference between plus plus I and I plus plus? I told you now, right? Pass this information on to your classmates. I am sure that no matter what questions you get, you know, everybody gets a different set of questions. Uh, no matter what question you get, you're bound to have at least two questions. Uh, that's two points, right? You're bound to have at least two out of 20 points that uh, deal with uh, plus plus and minus minus and the nuances, right? But what's the difference if I have the plus plus on this side and that side? You got to know that. And if you're ever in doubt, just, just try it out, right? You got a whole hour to do the midterm. Just try it out on a little program in Replete or CPU.sh and see, oh, that's what happens, okay? And then you can say, type in the right answer. So nothing to be stressed out in the midterm. Um, if, if you think that you did something horribly wrong, um, but then after the midterm, uh, you realized, oh my gosh, that was, <laughs> you know, um, that was not right. And then you know what the right answer is and you write me an email saying, I'm really sorry I wrote that. But then later on I went uh, and found out that this is the right answer. And this is why I think this is the right answer. And this is why I think I got the wrong answer. Yeah, if you tell me that, I'll just give you the point back. I don't care. I don't, uh, to be absolutely honest, I don't care what score you get in the midterm. I don't care how many you know, quests you master. I, none of that matters to me, okay? What matters is that you ended up learning it. And so after the midterm, if you come back to me and say, I didn't get a point there, but I actually did learn the concept right here. I can prove to you that I learned the concept. I'll give you the point back. I don't care, right? So, so the, the important thing is when you take the midterm, you've got a whole day. You can take it any time you want. Once you start the midterm, you get only 60, 60 minutes, right? Once you hit the start button, the timer starts 60 minutes from that. You can't stop it. You can't pause it, right? So take, pick a time. Pick a time when, uh, you know, look at the last 10 days of your life before the midterm and say, oh, over the last 10 days, uh, I think between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m., is when I'm mentally most settled, right? Nobody comes to bother me and I'm like, my, my tummy is full, I'm not thirsty, I'm happy. Um, that's when I should take the test, all right? So pick a time, pick a time when you're not gonna be disturbed, when you're peaceful and, and take the test then and, and you'll be fine. Don't stress out, okay? That's the last thing you want. Like I said, you know, computer bugs, the programming bugs have a very, very nasty, nasty uh, quality. Right, they've evolved. Right, this is it. bugs also evolve. Right, uh, through the, the bugs that survived um, are the ones that uh, successfully managed to uh, frustrate you. Right, uh, the bugs that didn't manage to frustrate you, uh, they're not really bugs because they get nixed as soon as you find them. Right, because when you're frustrated, you cannot find the bug, and that's the trick that bugs use to survive. Is to say it's like you know animals too. Right, they, they are camouflage like a chameleon right? and and the, the, you know the the, the chameleons that uh, develop the gene to change color octopi octopuses and all right um, they survive because they can't be seen and likewise bugs like you know real bugs if you can't see the bug that bug will you know live on for you know generations of computer scientists everybody will get bitten by that bug right um, so um, don't don't be stressed out 
Okay, and uh, and don't be frustrated. If you're frustrated, you're not going to be able to answer questions in the midterm. You're not going to be able to fix bugs in your code. Okay, so uh, one of my students, DDA, um, he is now doing my 2C. Uh, he made this observation and he posted in Reddit also, right? Uh, because in 2B, you're going to be stuck with bugs in your quests um, that uh, seem like totally impossible to solve. Impossible to solve. You know, you look at Reddit forums. Reddit people are saying, I, I, I'm just going to give up. I'm going to, right? Uh, I can't solve this bug. And they, and many, many times they'll just blame it on the questing system, right? Saying, uh, my program is 100% right. Your questing tester is wrong. There's a bug in your tester. Go and fix your tester before my program, right? So you think about all these things. Um, but really, the, the reason why you're thinking all that is just because you're frustrated. And you're frustrated and you think that I've done everything I can. I can't fix this. The problem must be elsewhere like in real life, right? But, and, and the only way to solve it is to say, no, 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 right? So maybe the problem is not elsewhere, but it's here. I just can't see it. Um, I can't see it right now because it's, you know, I'm sweating and there's, you know, sweat in front of my eyes. I'm just going to take it easy, cool it down. Didi has said, take a walk, okay? Always works. Well, not always. Most of the time it works. And take a walk, take a walk, cool down, cool down a bit. You come back and look at it with fresh eyes, you'll fix the bug, yeah? And then you can move forward. And that's what, and, 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 and keep this in mind. This is most important to keep in mind, okay? Because when you're frustrated uh, with a bug is the, is the biggest time, the, the, the most likely time that people will give up computer science altogether. That's you know, throwing out the baby with the bathwater. That's, that's when it happens. When you're frustrated, you'll say, you know, to hell with this. I don't want this anymore. Um, I've done my best, right? So don't, don't, don't do that, do that, okay? Because everything, anything you do, you'll be frustrated, no matter what it is, right? You're learning to paint through, through uh, ceramics, pottery. You, you're gonna make a hundred parts, a thousand parts, and you toss them, you crush them, and you know, you're gonna do this. Don't be frustrated because it's there, it's there. And once you get, and, and, and the thing is, what, you're, what are you looking for when you're frustrated is for that magical moment right? That magical moment when everything basically congeals, right? So it, it's, it's all out there, right? And you're working away and all of a sudden you'll experience that many times in your life, right? When you're in your program or life, you'll experience, it's all out there uh, and you think it's never going to happen. And all of a sudden uh, you notice something, right? One little thing, one little thing you notice and you fix that comes together. And then when you see that happen and it's fixed, that gives you like a, but you, that is the that is the, the feeling you are going for is to um, to is see things come together, see things come together, right? And and then uh, and you won't enjoy it as much if you're frustrated when that happens, right? So make sure you're mindful and complete, right? Your entire uh, concentration and focus is on this show about to happen in front of your eyes, right? If you go to a ma ma magnificent performance, but you're thinking about something else, you're not gonna enjoy the performance, right? And you know, she'll come and dance and it'll gone, and then and someone else asks, what was the dance about? You have no idea what the hell happened, right? So don't be frustrated, just have your full attention on the code uh, without frustration, right? Because if, you have frust if you're frustrated, you're not thinking about the program, you're thinking about other things. So cool down and you'll be able to do it, right? So midterm alexis the most important thing is pick the best time in your life i don't know that oh yeah oh, when i uh, said alexis uh, alexa picked up uh, so alexis what is the time the time is 9.56 a.m. Hey, thank you, Alexis. Okay, all right. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Um, so uh, anyway, Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Um, okay, so um, yeah, there, there. that's what we're going. Um, so don't, don't be frustrated. Uh, take, take your time, take it easy. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Select the Echo device you want to pair with okay. Alexa Gadget. Select Pair Alexa Gadget. All right, can, can I just talk and you can hear me still because with, with that thing blabbering on in the background? So, yeah, all you need to do is everybody I know, uh, including me, has, uh, has a cycle during the day, right? A cycle when, of productivity. At certain times in the day, um, you are most productive and it's not it, and it's based on a number of biological factors what you ate and and how much you slept and when you slept and so on but it's usually predictable right plus or minus one hour just find that time right look at the last 10 days of your life 
find the time, not just for the midterm, for the final, for any, for all your other classes too. Find that time and time, uh, and, and then place your uh, activity in that time, and then you're guaranteed to see great success. Yes, is, is, was that helpful? All right, thank you, uh, Giorgio. Yes. Yes, thank you, Alexis. All right, I will see you guys on, uh, what is it today? Is it uh, Thursday? Oh, wow, it's Thursday already. Uh, okay. Um, all right, on um, Tuesday, uh, uh, get back together on Tuesday, and um, you should feel free, like I say. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, uh, you're welcome. And uh, was it was it and or anand? Anand. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Anna. All right. Uh, so, um, yeah, if you want an extra lecture, let me know, okay? Uh, it doesn't have to be a whole hour, 10 minute lectures. I'm happy to give 10 minute lectures. Just let me know. I'm happy to just come by here, sit down and talk to you. Okay? Um, so thank you, thank you so much uh, for attending and presenting, presenting your uh, beautiful work today. Um, all right, thank you. Thank See you. See you on Tuesday, have a good weekend.